Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In a previous video I had introduced the RD704 engine and dubbed it the best launch engine ever tested. It is a unique engine in that it has two configurations. It uh, switches modes in flight and it goes from using kerosene, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen with a high thrust uh, to using just hydrogen and oxygen with higher efficiency but lower thrust. Now the question is, well, if it's the best launch engine ever tested, uh, could we just throw it on SLS and make SLS more efficient? You know, could we replace the RS-25s with it? Or could we come up with some other configuration using the RD-704? And the answer is not really. <laughs> it's not very easy to reconfigure SLS to use the RD-704 engine, even if we assume that the the tankage itself is completely fluid. In other words, we just, well, fluid is funny because the, it's liquid fuel. Anyway, but uh, even if we assume that, you know, the bulkheads between the different propellants is uh, completely fungible, uh, we can move those as we like and fill them with whatever. Uh, even given that, it's hard to get the, uh, to really replace the RS-25s uh, with anything. The RS-25s, are the best engine for this. Our our major grievance is that we can't bring them back, right? It's not that there's some other more efficient engine that could be placed here. There isn't. Uh, they they are the best engine. And the issue is bringing them back, and of course I solved that with my little shuttle mice. If you haven't seen the shuttle mice, they're basically little mini shuttles that uh, just carry two of these. There would be two shuttle mice, one on each side of SLS, and they would just carry these engines back. And if you like the video on the Max spacecraft, basically the shell mice are tinier versions of the Max spacecraft without the crew space and the cargo space. So you could imagine using a Max here, in fact. So yeah, we could put a Max here and, well, two Maxes, and they could carry the engines back. Now, why can't we do that with the RD-704, you might ask? We've already got the, I'm not gonna tweak them out. Um, you know, we could put the, you can see the RD-704s are basically the same size as the RS-25s. It'd be a nice fit. And actually, they're lighter than the RS-25s. The problem is that the mode that the RD-704 has that matches the thrust of the RS-25s, they're both roughly 2,000 kilonewtons. The RS-25 has a little bit more thrust, uh, 2,300. But the RD-704 is a 2,000 kilonewton engine in its kerosene, hydrogen, oxygen mode. Uh, now that mode isn't as efficient as pure hydrogen and oxygen, which is what the RS-25 uses. The RD-704 does have a different mode, the hydrogen and oxygen mode, but it only gets 700 kilonewtons in that mode. So it can't be used in place of the RS-25s in that mode purely, uh, especially since even as it is, the thrust weight ratio, once the boosters go off, the thrust weight ratio of the core here is basically one. Uh, with the RS-25s. In that mode, it is not a good replacement for the RS-25. It is more efficient than the RS-25 in vacuum in hydrogen-oxygen mode, but again, the thrust is a problem. So, yeah, uh, the best, w uh, really, the RS-25 is a great engine for this role. It's just that we would rather uh, have shuttle mice. And of course, uh, if you take out the crew space and cargo space, it ends up being a very nice small thing and we could uh, easily bring those engines back. I say easily. But the issue here is that the actual launch vehicle engines, the things that are providing most of the power here off the pad, are the five segment boosters. And that sort of skews things quite a lot. But could we put these engines on the booster side? Well, not exactly. Let's, let's go through all the changes in detail. So, simplest option first. Let's just take these off. Put the RS, uh, RD-704s on. And switch the fuel to the RD-704s uh, triple propellant configuration. So, there. And there. Now, with hydrogen and oxygen, with the RS-25s, this got 10,567 meters per second with a 105 ton payload. That's what we've got up in the fairing. 
So 105 ton payload, 10,567 meters per second. So we need that for comparison. This gets a lot of delta V. The problem is it can't make it off the pad, right? Because it's a lot heavier because it's got the heavier fuel configuration, the kerosene, hydrogen, and oxygen, which is heavier and denser. Uh, so it does get a lot of delta V, but it can't launch. And so if we underfuel this and try and get the sea level thrust to weight ratio down to where we can get off the ground, well, we might as well just unfuel this top tank. And we had a thrust to weight ratio of about 1.4 before with SLS. Uh, even here we can see, well, we're still not getting the thrust to weight ratio we need. And our delta V is already lower than the SLS configuration. So that's no good. So we can't just put them on like this because they'll get the lower ISP or roughly the same ISP as R68. R68 would have a higher thrust than these, but not by much. And it's a heavier engine too. Uh, these are only two tons a piece. R68 is something like six, seven tons each engine, uh, which makes them double the mass of an RS25. Uh, but they only get maybe about uh, 30, 40% more thrust than the RS25. So it's not... Yeah, I mean, the, the efficiency downside is about 15, 10, 15%. Part of our problem is the upper stage. Technically, the RD704 in its hydrogen oxygen configuration is more efficient than the RL10Cs. Uh, they have 455-ish uh, or 451. And the RD704 in its hydrogen oxygen configuration has 460 so that's nice but it only has the one ignition technically uh, that's complicated but only one ignition in flight and it doesn't have redundancy so we would probably have to have something like that ish and note that in its hydrogen oxygen configuration it's only 700 kilonewtons so it's not got incredible thrust weight ratio so this is still a fairly lowish thrust weight ratio stage it's only got half the thrust weight ratio of a j2x though it is lighter and it's an eight minute stage so well actually we've got the rl 10s separate so uh with the rl 10s going at the same time uh it's a little bit better but overall there's no huge benefit to putting it here Really, the RL10s are the best. They're really, really light, uh, and they're really, really efficient. And so some people keep talking about the J2X because they they love Constellation, even though it was just a paper project. <laughs> but uh, J2X would not be a good replacement, actually. Uh, the only benefit to J2X is its thrust, which is completely useless for this kind of stage. This is a transfer stage. Uh, we do have the Leo payload on the SLS right now, but this is not a Leo rocket, really. It is not meant to go to low Earth orbit. It's just better for comparison's sake that we put that payload on, but it's sort of arbitrary. Uh, the purpose of this stage is to transfer to high orbits like the Moon and Mars, and in that case, a thrust weight ratio is not a big deal. And so you want the lightest, most efficient engines that you can get, and the RL10s are a good combination of being light and being super efficient. The J2X is really, really heavy by comparison. It's about three tons. Uh, these RL10s are probably around 200 kilograms a piece. So you're talking about maybe one ton altogether. And of course you get redundancy. With uh, one J2X you would not have that redundancy. So the upper stage I've heard the RS-25 being used as an upper stage. No, don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Uh, it is a very heavy engine. It is uh, much heavier than the RD-704. It's heavier than the J2X as well. And it's uh, not got any qualities that will help you out. So we've got a thing where we've got too much tankage mass, right? We only need this much tankage mass if we're going to use these. So why don't we just make a smaller rocket? We could get rid of this entire tank. And if we're going to use these in kerosene, hydrogen, oxygen mode, well, 
that's got 6 minutes and 20 seconds of burn time right there. Well, this has a healthy thrust to weight ratio. This is getting close, but it's not an improvement. But we could save a lot on tankage. The problem is it's a really ridiculous looking rocket in general. We, if we add a little bit more tankage mass to this, let's see. Okay, so now, now we've got something going. We've got a 1.37 thrust weight ratio and 10,700 meters per second, which is more than the RS-25s had. You got smaller tanks, which is nice. Uh, you're not really using the RD-704s to their most wonderful extent, though, because we're not even switching them to their hydrogen and oxygen mode at all. And uh, we've got a little bit of a problem once the boosters separate that our thrust weight ratio is only 0.73, so actually we probably can't get away with that. Uh, if we match, uh, that 0.73 is not true though, because the boosters last longer than 1 minute 40 seconds. It's actually 2 minutes and 6 seconds. So we would get to higher than that. Around here, we get about the same. And so th that's about the same thrust weight ratio off the pad and after the boosters separate. And we have less delta V. We have about 200 meters per second less. So it's really tight. There's a benefit to the fact that the tanks are smaller, but there's a downside and also a benefit from the fact that the uh, engines are lighter, but there's a downside that we have less specific impulse. Now we could, well, we really can't switch modes uh, with this because if we switch modes from 2000 kilonewtons to 700 kilonewtons, we end up just barely with a thrust weight ratio of 1 at the end, which will be too tight to allow for the next stage to complete orbit. So, yeah, we've got a bit of a problem. We would want to replace the SRBs with these engines, but if we gotta spam these RD-704s, and we would have to because the SRBs produce quite a lot of thrust, and so we would need quite a lot of these engines, we want a way to recover these engines. And so I did think about this configuration. <laughs> uh, I probably shouldn't have, but here we are. Uh, so this is the configuration. We, we actually need the hydrogen in there, thank you. Um, this is the Starship boosted SLS with RD-704s all the way. Um, this has the distinct problem of not having enough thrust weight ratio as a matter of fact. The most uh, RD-704s we can stick in here are 7 and it's actually not recoverable because they can't relight for landing. And they don't have uh, the, well they do sort of have throttle, actually they do have uh, potentially uh, actual throttle range. Uh, because they can moderate how much kerosene is being thrown in. But um, yeah, this is obviously not a good configuration. It can't get off the pad. Nice delta V though, but again, because of the same reasons we had before. If we underfueled, which we know Starship can do, uh, we can sort of get off the pad, but then we don't have any delta V. Uh, so once again, we've got a problem there. So this isn't great. Yeah, this is... If we use starships just normally, they can barely get off the ground on their own, much less to lift something else up. So that's no good. I mean, assuming they're fully fueled. So yeah, that's not an option either. So using them as boosters. Now you may have also considered a configuration like this where everything shares the same tank and we are just using the RD-701 and in this case, we should probably also undersupply our max shuttles, assuming that they go automated and they don't need to carry payload. They probably only need very little fuel there. Uh, don't bother about the wing clipping because the max spacecraft actually had folding wings, so those wouldn't clip, uh, normally speaking. Uh, of course, we would rather just have the shuttle mice, but for argument's sake, because we're using the RD-704s, so I'm putting the max here. Uh, the, the we have a lot of extra mass in terms of cockpit and cargo space, but uh, well, the situation isn't going to be too much different. And the main problem is that we eventually have to have some engine down here. We could 
<laughs> put the RS twenty fives back on. Uh, or, uh, but yeah, the problem is these only get the seven hundred kilonewtons or seven hundred eighty five kilonewtons with the hydrogen and oxygen, and that doesn't provide enough thrust to weight ratio. We've got four of them, and so and ultimately we don't have enough delta V. You can see. Uh, we've got uh, this tank filled up with the kerosene, hydrogen, and oxygen, but if we make it any bigger, this isn't going to get off the ground. Uh, these on the MAX spacecraft are uh, kerosene, hydrogen, and oxygen, so they'll fly back. And then these are the ones that are hydrogen and oxygen. We could switch that up, but I don't anticipate any great difference in the result. Uh, we just don't have enough mass, and we can't stick enough engines on here to make it work out. Even if we had, let's say, nine, that's always a popular number these days. And we switched all these nine to the high thrust mode right away. So, okay, we've got the high thrust mode, and eventually we'll want to use this tank and its hydrogen and oxygen, but we'll wait. And uh, we need to move all the engines to the first stage. So now we are potentially dumping nine of them, but we'll pretend some smart reuse with heat shield and something like that. You know, we can do that uh, instead of using the max spacecraft. But let's see. Increasing this. And that guy shift things around for looks. So, okay. Uh, now we're getting to the mass that we need. 4,000 meters per second there. And then we've got this tank. Let's say for argument's sake we've got that and we switch to center engine mode mode 2 and we we drain this i mean we're, st we're still carrying more dry mass in terms of the max shuttles but we had about 4000 and of course there'll be more engines switching mode but we've only got one switching mode right now um but yeah we've got 3600 here so it adds up to uh 7600 or so which is not going to be enough so, yeah, but the, uh, if we got all this really optimized, we could maybe break the 10,760, uh, sorry, 10,567 that we saw with SLS by default. And, but it's going to be tight. Ultimately, I think the optimal situation is to try and create an SSTO with the RD Sona 4s and not have any complicated arrangement like this. Uh, this is sophisticated, but bringing back four automated shuttlecraft seems a lot. And then we have to do the smart reuse. It's a bit of a mess. The upshot of this is that the RS 25s are really hard to replace. <laughs> Uh, the RS-25 RL-10 combination should not be underestimated, actually. Uh, it, it's not so easy to come up with a replacement for them, especially if you want redundancy. The, the only, I think the main grievance with SLS as far as engine choices is we would probably like liquid boosters. Uh, we would like re more recoverable boosters. Uh, we would like to recover the RS-25s. And maybe the RL-10 is a little bit too pricey. But in sheer efficiency terms, it's actually really hard to beat SLS. Uh, it is a very efficient rocket. It's just not a very cheap rocket. <laughs> it's, these are two different things, right? Uh, and if the RD-704 was being made by the same people that were making the uh, RS-25s, let's say Aerojet Rocketdyne purchased the plans for it and started producing them, I don't expect that the RD-704 would be any cheaper than the RS-25. So, yeah, using the RD-704, even though it's a wonderful, wonderful engine on SLS is tricky, but maybe we can come up with a single stage to orbit system that can get 105 tons up and recover the RD 704s, and I will explore that in a subsequent video. So, with that discussion being done, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.